I grew up showing pigs and they're my favorite animal. But sometimes because of that, I have a little bit of a hard time eating pork. Today, we're gonna go to a local pig farm and play with some baby pigs and then come back and make a pork-free late summer veggie plate. They're so cute and tiny. These are four days old. I grew up showing pigs. My first pig, her name was Daisy, and I showed every year from the fourth grade to the 10th grade. My mom, when I was growing up, would read Charlotte's Web to me. I pretended like I was Fern when I was little, and, and in Charlotte's Web, Fern would always take Wilbur and kind of just like, that was her baby, and I always treated my pigs like they were my baby. Girl pigs and boy pigs. Girl pigs that have not had any children are called gilts, and boys that have been castrated are called barras. <laughs> Oh, right now it's about 92 degrees outside and I am glistening because southern women we don't sweat. Pigs, they also don't sweat or glisten so that's why they roll around in the mud. Whatever you call pigs, a lot of people say suey or woo suey piggy come here and so I'm kind of scared to say that to any of these pigs so they think that I'm food. When I used to show pigs, the showing weight was anywhere from 200 to 300 pounds. That was regulation. These pigs are about double the size of the pigs that I would show. So these are probably around 450, 500 pounds. Typically on a pig farm like this, you'll have about five or six sows, which are the mama pigs, and you'll have one boar. So he's a lucky fella. This is the boar, the dad of all of the baby pigs that we've played with today. He's a big fella. Okay, so I used to wash my pigs in buttermilk before the pig show every year. I don't know if these pigs are going to really like it. Um, they're not about to go to show, so they really probably don't want to get clean, but I'm going to attempt it. If, if any of you have ever shown pigs and you've washed your pigs with buttermilk or you've done anything similar to this because you grew up reading Charlotte's Web or you maybe had a different secret, be sure to put it in the comments and, and tell me all about it. I can't wait to hear about them. The buttermilk is actually like pretty nourishing. Yeah for the pig's skin, and it really just gets a lot of the mud and dirt and impurities off and also nourishes the skin, which is a great trick for people's skin too. They like a good behind the ear scratch is what I always learned. At the end of the county fair, you had to send the pigs to market, and for me, that was my least favorite part. I'd spent four or five months really getting to know my pig and feeding it and walking it every day. And it was kind of like my best friend, just like Wilbur was for Charlotte. And so after I took my pig to market, I told my parents that I could not eat pork for the next three months because I didn't know when my pig was going to be sold. So today, in honor of my three-month tradition every year of not eating pork, we're going to go back to my kitchen and we're going to make a really good southern summer vegetable plate. So I've got some sweet corn. This is bicolor sweet corn and I'm going to use this corn creamer and cream my corn so we can make really good cream corn. That stuff that you can get in the can, y'all, does not compare to fresh cream corn. It can be a corn cutter where it cuts kernels easily off of the cob for you, or it can cream the corn. And what that means is that it kind of crushes the kernels as you cut them off of the cob and gets that natural corn milk that you want that makes cream corn really, really yummy. If any of y'all have one of these corn creamers at your house or maybe you've seen one lying around at your grandmother's house and you didn't know what the heck it was, put it in the comments. I want to hear about it. Do you like using a corn creamer? Do you use a knife to kind of make your cream corn? Let me know and tell me about it. We've got our cream corn that we're going to go ahead and get started while we finish up the rest of our veggie plate. Oops. And we're just going to turn it on low and kind of let this simmer while we're finishing up the rest of our veggie plate. I've got my cream corn on the stove and I think I have some fresh okra in my garden. So let's go out there and check. I like to pick my okra kind of small, so maybe about three inches or so. Anything longer than that tends to get kind of chewy and tough and you really like your okra super tender. For this recipe, we have smashed whole fried okra. And so we have whole okra pods that we're gonna take a meat mallet and smash. You really wanna be able to see the okra seed and inside of the pod so that you can make sure to get all of that crispiness inside of the okra. We're gonna soak our okra in some buttermilk. For my judging, we have some fine yellow cornmeal and some salt and pepper. We make sure that we have buttermilk coating the entire okra pod and then having a wet hand and a dry hand. And so using my wet hand, I'm gonna take my wet buttermilk soaked okra and put it into the dry cornmeal mix. 
And now with my dry hand, I'm going to give it a little toss. This is my favorite way to eat fried okra. I love being able to take a bite out of that okra pod. What do y'all think about these? To me, this guy is my star. I have crispy all over the inside and on the outside. If we're up to me, I'd go ahead and sneak a bite now. So this has been simmering for a little while and now we're going to add some butter and some milk and cream. This is gonna be super decadent and just really yummy. This recipe for glazed field peas is not the way I grew up eating peas, y'all. They're not mushy, they're super acidic and have a lot of butter and they're super yummy. You throw them in a pan with some chicken stock and butter and then put your peas in and kind of shake your pan around and glaze your peas and then add some lemon juice, salt, pepper, and herbs at the end and they are super yummy. I love to put some sliced fresh heirloom tomatoes and sliced fresh Georgia Vidalias on the side of all of my veggie plates. It just adds some freshness and some nice contrast to the cooked vegetables. So I have some friends coming over later to enjoy this veggie plate with me. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have everything on pretty serving platters. We had fun at the pig farm today playing with little pigs and now we've got a great summer vegetable plate that is completely guilt free. So we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.